everybody and welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to be talking about graph how to make your game better. So graphics, lighting, general look of the game, reflections, all that stuff. And I have, I, I, I have no time to start like begging like literally every single tutorial. It's annoying as hell. So please click the subscribe button and like button so you won't miss another upload. Tired of this crap, let's get on to it. Okay, go to your settings first. Let's set out, let's go set. And uh, I'm pretty sure you won't see it pop up, but there is an actual pop up. I'm going to be putting a screenshot. Anyway, set quality level to level 21 because the settings pop up doesn't show me somehow. Is it showing? Is it showing? Okay, set it to level 21 and quality level to level 21. Edit and quality level. So, if you cannot handle, uh, if your PC cannot handle high quality level, but you want your game to look good for a player who can handle it, go ahead. And you really need like have, uh, have a really good gaming PC to be honest. Like, even integrated graphics will work. We're fine. A decent CPU on integrated graphics because uh, Roblox's rendering is more CPU based, so you don't really need a high end PC to do it basically. But just in case you're not, it's lagging, set it to something you've got, you're comfortable with, and make sure quality level is high so any other player who can handle it is going to get the best experience. Graphics mode set it to direct 3D 11 or Vulcan. Vulcan did not work and crashed Roblox 3D for me. Maybe it will work for you, but I don't see any difference between 3D 11 and Vulcan. Okay, so it's already looking much better. Now let's talk about the lighting tab. Here we have compatibility. This is the first. This is basically the 2006 end rendering engine. With very little changes, like the original rendering engine. So you can see how much better. This is the uh, voxel. It's basically more dynamic lighting. I'm going to be setting it to shadow map. I'll, I'll, the shadow map, as you can see, has nicer. Let's actually set the time of day. Shadow map has nicer shadows, as you can see. Voxel shadows are the they're not good. Even on the highest quality level, they're decent, okay. But when you're looking from far from far away, it's just blurs. It's just want of shading. It's not actually shadows. Look at this, that's much better. And shadow softness, if you make it the sharpest thing, it will look like this, and this is high softness. If your game is indoors, for example, here, shadow softness, make it make the shadow softness low, low, low. Obviously, I've removed all the lights because I'm going to be showing you something at the end. But shadow softness, if you're indoors, make it low. And if if your game is more indoors, but if the game is in a city or with skyscrapers or it's full of trees and stuff, then make it then make it high. Because okay, let me explain. If your game is indoors. It will look like this. High softness looks like makes it makes a good, really good difference. There we go. See. So if your game is outdoors, make it that. Make it high. Indoors, make it low. I'm going to make it high. I'll make it all the way high because it doesn't actually change depending on how high the object that's casting the shadow is. 
some reason. I hope they add it in the future. But for now, but for now, as of 2020, that's what you should do. Back to the lighting tab. Brightness depends on what your game, what you want your game to be. You can make your game blindingly bright if you like. I think the original was two, so that's two. I'll set it to three. I think three is nice. Two point is good. Okay. And this looks good. Now the ambience. So basically, ambience is the sh the color of the shape, basically. Because when there's no light, there has to be at least a bit of light. And the atmosphere stuff. I think. I think. I. I don't even know what I'm saying. You get what? You get the point, right? You can even make your ambience color. Oh my God! <laughs> this error. So what happens with this error? Look at this. This looks weird. You can basically tint your game red if you like. Obviously, I'm not doing that. I'm going to be tasteful. You can make your game crazy, and, and I actually have a game called H, which is basically just the letter H everywhere. So I can uh, make it very, very crazy. But in a game trying to be realistic, go ahead. Ambience should be. This underset this like this. Looks nice. Color shift. I don't know what this does. I tried it, but I, I really don't know how to use it. Basically, also tilts your game, but it has something to do with. But it tints. It's it's more specific tinting, unlike ambient. Okay, so this is environmental diffuse scale, and this is environment specular scale. And for the fuse scale, I'm going to set it to night time. Set it to night time. Okay, it's night time. Now let's show what the diffuse scale does. So if you're uh, if you have night time in your game and then I then I try to make the diffuse scale a bit a bit. Um, this is what the diffuse scale does to it also tint a bit makes it more atmospheric it gives a nice skyish tint looks pretty cool and it is, and it is realistic environment specular scale also gives it a tint. Although if you make the diffuse scale all the way high, now look at this. Depending on your skybox, you could have all your whites are now tinted, and you don't want that. So be tasteful. It's looking good. Environmental diffuse scale also looks nice in the dark indoors. As I'm about to show you. And if you don't want any shadows in your game, uh, I don't know why would you want them, but just in case you don't, you can switch off global shadows. Okay. We're already nine minutes in. Holy crap! I'm telling you, it's a long one. 
outdoor ambient. It's basically also the color of the shadows. I think the normal ambient is indoor ambient. That looks nice. That looks nice. Let's see the indoor ambient there. Okay, so if you want your indoors to be dark, like this. Oh. Hopefully the, there must be a bit of light coming in this dark house. I which I've intentionally removed all the lights from. I think that looks like a dark house. This looks like a dark house. A day, let's see how the dark house at night looks like. That's only at night. Okay, that looks dark. That looks nice. Let's go back to data. So it's already looking much nicer. Oh, you can also change your geographic latitude. Probably the location of your game. I never messed with that. But you can if you know what you're doing. So if your game is in the North Pole or in the South Pole or something like that. Okay, now we go to exposure. Oh, this is blinding. So you can make, if you want your players to go blind, you can make a blinding game. Go ahead. But if you don't want your players to go blind, then don't do it. I don't think don't even do it at all unless. That's what you're going for in your game. Fog end. If you make fog end one, the lower the fog end, the more foggy it is, basically. If I add another zero to this twenty, it's now less foggy. Obviously, I need some fog. This makes it more clear. If fog, if it, fog end uh, has more to do with, it's going to be, it's going to make more of a difference if your map is big. You can also color your fog, which I'm not going to do, and I'm going to explain why, because there is a really good uh, lighting effect. I'm going to show you it. Let's now put sun rays effect. What this does is now add sun rays to the game. You can uh, make it blindingly bright like this, like literally every showcase game. Or you can be tasteful like this. Yeah, I recommend being tasteful, unless your game is set in Mercury or something, go ahead. Let's add a skybox. Because I'm going to be showing you something that needs a skybox, okay. It's called atmospheric lighting and it's got released pretty recently. Okay, there we go, we have the skybox in. Now let's insert atmosphere. From insert object. Look at that. Now, obviously, you don't want. It has more to it. It's basically an extension of the fog. I think. Where did the fog options go? City. 
try to set your density to something low. If your map is big, basically, if there's a mountain far away, it's going to be stinted the color of the sky, as I'm going to explain. It's going to be a bit stinted, blue tinted, basically, unless your skybox is purple. It does look nice. You can also add some glare and the haze. If that's what you want. You can basically be really creative. You're going to notice the difference you have a really big map on your game. But I've not noticed anything because you'll see if your game has a big map, you'll see the difference. I'm just going to say something. I think would be tasteful in a big game. Already looking better, not with the atmosphere because it's a small map. It's a small base plate, I just added some stuff to show how reflections work. I don't want to delete all the lighting I did in my own game, so that's why I just made this place. There is also Bloom. Basically anything white is going to get bright as hell and I'm not sure so it's now blindingly bright see this this is white so it's now blindingly bright the lighter the lighter something is the more blindingly bright is even this beige is being affected as you can see I don't like it at all but maybe so basically if there's a white tower or a very light colored tower it also has something to do with how far it is. As you can see, this is very bright, but when you get close, it's normal. This threshold is good. show you two effects I never used because I don't see why I would use them but you may be interested in this is called blur obviously <laughs> if that's what you want go ahead if you want to have a blurry game or maybe sometimes a blurry game maybe make a script that makes it blurry on some occasions because I feel sure you can do lighting dot blur dot size plus one in your script or something. So go ahead. And this is a really good one, but I'm not using it. I'm not using it in this game, but I'm using it in my H game. And it's deep drawing color correction. You can do lots of stuff on it. So in my game, it's literally just the letter H. I can uh, deep fry crap. So this game is now deep fried. You can also do the saturation, make it more colorful. Obviously, this is not realistic. Why would you do that? So now, basically, your game is a cartoon. If you want to go for a cartoony look or a colorful look, go ahead. Be creative. Tint color, you can also add a tint color. And this is another way to tint your whole game. Even the selector box is now tinted somehow. Like, look at this. The selector box is also tinted, which I think is pretty cool. You know why I'm removing it because it's unnecessary. You may like it, that's why I showed it. And we back to lighting. Okay, actually not back to lighting. Because I'm going to be showing you something not to do with the graphics, but how to if you game is a racing game maybe or you game is full of sky skyscrapers and like that. You want you want the sky to be visible. Bit on your 
car or skyscraper so set the reflectives if you want to make your car chrome go ahead that's how you do it I'm going to be making it chrome this is chrome yeah, I think it's closest thing to chrome this is chrome it's obviously tinted the color of your sky but this is the difference when you add just, just a pinch of reflect even a pinch of reflectance if you make it something like half it looks really weird so uh, in my racing game what I can do is 0 0.03 that's how much I do it it already looks nice so this is with no reflectance the hood is no reflectance and the rest of the, this Camaro is high reflectance you can see the difference it's really visible that's one way to make your game look better. Also, I, I forgot to say is that you can now have refraction if you chose. If you did exactly what I did, I think it's something to do with quality level or direct 3D11 or Vulcan. If you chose direct 3D11 or Vulcan, I think you got refraction. Okay, good. Now. Nah. Let's continue. Lighting. Oh, sh oh okay, okay, I forgot. Where you skyscraper? If your game has skyscrapers, let's do this real quick. Obviously, skyscrapers are glass. They have glass on the outside. So let's make this glass. Let me show you something cool. Don't make it transparent. Just make the reflective side. This is good for skyscrapers. Then I have the sky reflecting from the skyscraper. So you can also do that. Okay, now I've saved the best for last. If you, you, if you uh, opted into the beta features by going to settings and beta features. You're going to have a new lighting that's physically based renderings. Basically, when something is, it, you can no see, you can see no difference. Okay, but now look at the inside. Obviously, no difference because you didn't realize it. Okay, obviously you can see no difference. Okay, there's a bit of a difference. Basically now when something when so, there's some light instead of just the actual okay let's show you in this building I made it. Okay. in shadow map and voxel you will realize that the light is just making it bright it's just making the material bright and then just j gradually becoming darker and darker in future. The details of the light are showing. Obviously, I've made it too bright because I set it when I was in box so That's why we will see how bad it looks. It looks like it's on fire. So let's actually lower this just to show you what I mean. And it already looks much better. So now the actual details of it are going to light up instead of just it itself just being very bright. All like the grooves in it, and when they add, when they add custom materials, you can uh, if they allow you to use uh, textures, making the textures. I think you can use nodes and stuff, Blender nodes, if you use Blender, you can customize that and make maybe a marble and bits of a marble uh, reflect more than the rest of the marble really cool stuff basically and this is another use of reflect reflectance obviously it doesn't actually work as a mirror 
Okay, let's make it dark and show you what I mean. I'm going to walk around this dark house with a flashlight. There we go. No, I don't want your free model. I don't even use much free models. I just use them for this tutorial place. Okay, let's forget. Check this out. See, this works very well for horror games. Look at these details. I, look, the grooves and the brick are lighting up instead of just the normal brick. Really cool. Look at the look at how the ground reflects. Very cool stuff. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was very useful for you.